All right, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Professor Gray, as you know. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, as you can see, I'm feeling a little bit better, but we're not quite sure whether or not I am um, still contagious. So uh, we're recording this to uh, give you some background and help, some, help you uh, to understand some of the concepts that we have, in fact, been... Um, discussing throughout the course of our time together in the early stages of this uh, semester. So what I wanted to do is just take this opportunity to uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you for your uh, convenience and flexibility. And uh, well, we're going to get to it in just a second. What I wanted to do this evening is introduce some terms to you that will be a part, uh, should be a part of this file, technology permitting, uh, once I upload them at the conclusion of this recording. And I want to talk to you about some terms that we briefly introduced last week that I'm sure that if you are able to master them, then we quite frankly should be able to move forward and you should be able to succeed not only for purposes of this class and remember what we're working on here is less about the class and more about life skills or preparing yourself for life after college for opportunities that present themselves when you use your social uh, media apparatus and again I am looking forward to seeing what you have been posting. So please be mindful that when you get those links to start uh, sending them to me so that I can evaluate them and we can get you moving on the pace towards, you know, an A grade and B and most importantly, uh, success in a social media workspace that you are going to be entering in, which is totally different than anything we've ever seen, certainly in my lifetime. So among the things that I want to go over with you this evening is 12 specific uh, points that I think that moving forward, even if you don't get right now that you're mindful of, because as I've been telling you all semester long, this course is as much about succeeding grade-wise, but it's more important that you retain the information and you apply it when you start looking for internships, preferably for pay, when you start getting job interviews that can help secure your you know, financial stability or securing a bag that changes the direction of your life. And oftentimes you're going to find yourself in moments where you have to um, deliver a presentation and hopefully you will be able to do so in such a fashion that you will stand out. And remember, the term that we like to use is cutting through. I want to make sure that by, at, by the time everybody finishes my class, you have the confidence and the skills necessar necess uh, necessary to, in fact, cut through. Now, there are 12 specific points that I've attached uh, to this announcement that I want you to be mindful of, and I want, them, want you to add them to, big college word here, your lexicon, your nomenclature, you know, your body of professional vocabulary words, that you can refer to at any given time and be able to use them without off-putting anybody, but proving just how intellectually savvy that you are. And we introduced one of them last week, and I wanted to go over that in greater detail. Now, we talked about the term copy contact. You might remember when I told you that. And copy contact to me is defined by the consistent visual contact with information during your presentation. Remember, 
constant visual contact. Now, again, just like I just did, there are going to be moments that if you have a written thing, you're going to have to, you know, look down to make sure that you have things right. However, my philosophy on copy contact is simply remembering what you're going to talk about, not just in a way that allows you to state your position using verbiage, you know, the words that you have written down, which can, if you're not careful, cause you to look stoic and unfamiliar with what you're talking about. Experts in a virtual space have to maintain eye contact. Like I'm maintaining eye contact with you right now. Okay, I am holding some paperwork here, but for the most part, I understand the concepts that we're talking about. And I just want to make sure that I don't get too far ahead on my pace because of my familiarity that it derails you. So most important, the visual contact is so key when you're doing these formal and virtual presentations because you are able to subconsciously lock your audience in and a lot of stuff that goes on with verbal presentations and the reaction to said presentation are things that you can do to ensure that people are maintaining contact with you so you don't want to be so self-reliant on the paperwork that you're not connecting with your audience. It's one thing to be self-reliant on paperwork when you're making a formal presentation, you know, in front of a mass of people where you might be working off a teleprompter that goes out. But as long as you make the commitment to it mentally, as long as you have a full grasp of the concepts that you're trying to convey to your audience, then your message certainly through social media will in fact get there. And again, the, the same thing in YouTube. YouTube may be the big dog as far as social media is concerned, but there are layers to YouTube right now. And with YouTube's model becoming more uh, entertainment-based, the greater need for conversation and the ability to communicate through your social media platforms, i.e. LinkedIn for professional benefits. And if you don't have a LinkedIn account, then I think you should be working towards that end as soon as possible. Okay. So just be mindful of that. When you get a chance to do a, I don't know, virtual resume, you want to be able to maintain contact with the audience by mentally keeping contact with your skills and your strengths that you're trying to convey in order for you to make a, a presence that would allow you to advance along to perhaps the second round of interviews or to, in fact, get the job or the internship. So again, it's good to have notes. It's good to have places that you're referencing. However, you do not, in the midst of a virtual presentation, want to rely so much on the copy that you come off as reading. Not a good look. It gives uncertainty to the uh, interviewer who will more than likely be the person that either pushes your resume or credentials along to the next round or stifling it and you get one of those dreaded, thank you for your interest, but we're going in uh, another direction type of virtual responses. So again, it's the little things in presentations that make a big difference. Another thing that I want you to be mindful of, ladies and gentlemen, is the term crutches. And again, we will have this posted as an attachment in just a little while, okay? 
And crutches are what I like to refer to as words or phrases that um, often become monotonous because you lose copy contact. You ever find yourself in a position where you're going, um, well, you know, um, um, stuff like that? Well, those are places where you are falling back on crutches. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know is one of the biggest ones. I'm banking that you know that I know what you're talking about. If I'm receiving all of these you knows in the midst of a virtual presentation, I'm going to think that, well, you really do not know as one who's receiving the message. And remember, we talked about that in class last week, how there's so many potholes potentially in the message that I'm trying to deliver to you from my brain to my mouth, right? And then you receive it in your brain. Your brain has to decode it and decipher what it truly means. And you can do a, a Google search on a communications model and you can see it in its own form. Lose the crutches, okay? If you have to practice, if you have to recite, or try your best when you don't understand something to just go silent collect yourself and deliver what do i mean by that somebody asks you a question you pause for a second and then deliver your answer mr gray what is your thought on virtual space travel do you think artificial intelligence will get us to outer space you don't want to rely on a uh well you know collect yourself in two or three seconds and then respond. Or when you're in the midst of your social media interview process, that's where the outline comes in. And we will talk about outlining next week, okay? Because again, like I said, I don't want these extemporaneous outlines. I don't want you to have to feel like you're burdened with more paperwork because this is going to be a performance-based class. So at the moment where you're presenting, we want to make sure that you're presenting in a way that you're comfortable with, where you're comfortable with the uh, information that you're disseminating so that you can maintain copy contact without looking at the papers and you don't fall back on your crutches, um, you know, hmm, words like that, which show signs that you really aren't familiar with what you're trying to say. It takes away from your projection of confidence that you're supposed to be giving and therefore reduces the prospect for you to be a standout candidate in trying to secure a job, an internship, or advance your brand to whatever the goal is of your performance. Because at the end of the day, these are performances. These are opportunities that you have to impact an audience. Therefore, they are, in many respects, a virtual performance. Another one of the things that I think that a lot of people in the initial stages are unfamiliar with projecting and using to their benefit is voice inflection, okay? I can create a tremendous amount of enthusiasm by simply raising my voice. It shows passion. It shows excitement. It adds a little bit of drama but you can also convey it in a different kind of way, depending on what you're talking about. Most likely, if you have the unfortunate circumstance to address a group uh, in mass about the passing away of a colleague, of a family member, 
the loud, boisterous tone is not something you want to use. You want to have a more sensitive or positive tone. But most importantly, you do not want to be just monotone. You do not want to be deadpan. You do not want to sit there and just look like this when you're talking to someone and you are just so stoic because you're nervous. I'm looking at you right now and I'm thinking, this guy's nervous. This lady's unsure of herself. These people aren't ready to face the music during the symphony. So therefore, they go back to the file of potentially callbacks or good luck with another job or vocation. Okay, so just me, be mindful of that. Hey, be enthusiastic, be confident, project that in your speech pattern, and you will go a long way. Then there's the other term called the hook. That should be a part of your first um, 30 seconds of your presentation, especially when we get, get into that uh, one to three minute type of presentation that I'm talking to you about. Hook me early. You know, get your most important part out early and then drive it home with examples on the way home. Okay. I would use an example right now. Uh, I'm an Orioles fan. I'll be covering the Major League Baseball playoffs in Baltimore this year. And a lot of guys that I talk to will be hyped. They will say things that open up them to some conjecture, but they're the hook. They draw you in. They bring the audience to you. They make people tell, uh, take notice of what you're saying. Find a way and openly look to hook your audience, especially with social media. There's a young lady who's a teacher right now who is so passionate, who has about 28,000 followers on TikTok because she's been expressing her frustrations with the education process. And she is becoming a virtual influencer right now because of the frustration that she is dealing with, whether it's uh, parental irresponsibility, uh, belligerence of the students and them not being held accountable, how the school system and her municipality seems to empower students without holding them accountable for not doing their uh, work in school. Those are the kind of examples that I want to talk to you about. And I'm looking for a way to download some of her stuff so I can see because she's really aggressive and she's really powerful. Her speech is a little bit too fast, but when you're trying to get things into a condensed amount of time, you may want to think about uh, picking up the pace of your speech, but you don't want to sound like an auctioneer. <laughs> so not a good look, okay? But you do want to speak with clarity, confidence, and a matter of factness about you that gives you a chance to be effective at communicating your points. And remember, we're going for that informative, persuasive model, okay? Now, of course, uh, we talked about the eye contact thing, pretty self-explanatory. Look at your audience. Your, you know, time was we used to tell old people like myself when we were doing things like formal presentations to a group known as Toastmasters. And I'd always advise anybody to take that shot. Um, you know, when you when you maintain eye contact. It just gives a sense of sureness and you want to project sureness as it is. Be mindful not to get too far away from that main point either at term number six. All right. That's the focus of your presentation. Um, That's what drives everything. Everything, you know, you start this top at 12 on your watch and you come all the way back around at 12. 12 is your main point. You always want to have every piece of information circulating around the main point that brings you all the way back, brings your audience all the way back around to it 
over and over again. All right. So it's the focus of the presentation. Don't lose your focus. Every point that you're trying to make will, in fact, correlate to the point or to the to the subject matter that you're trying to informatively persuade upon your audience in some sort of call to action. And a lot of that will be helped by using supporting evidence. That's where uh, statistics, that's where uh, examples from your personal life, um, things that may substantiate it that you've seen or learned about in a news environment, those are pieces of supporting evidence that can help make you seem like you're more assured than the next candidate about what you're talking about, which again helps you cut through. There I go, the hook, cutting through. It's about making sure that your social media presentations are digitally uh, produced so that you can leave a lasting impact. What's the lasting impact? The drop the mic moment. Remember we talked about hook them, hold them, and drop the mic? Supporting evidence is something if you can leave your presentation with, that drops the mic for you. Just something to think about, and we will get into deeper dives with that. And again, if you got any questions, write them down, send them to me. We'll talk in open form about that. But in order for you to get more out of this class, you're going to have to start participating, asking me the questions that I can help you with as we introduce these contests. Now, I'm hoping that you understand the difference between informative speech and persuasive speech. Your informative speech is definitely a presentation that's designed to be objective, middle of the road, just the facts type of presentation. The persuasive speech is something where you're trying to bring your audience over to your side. The great social media influencers and brand ambassadors are able to inform you about subject matter and then convince you to make a, a, a move in the direction that you're talking about. So you're persuading them. So you inform them about an informa informative cir uh, informational circumstance, and then you persuade them to act on it. When you can meet in the middle between those two concepts, you will become an effective social media content producing influencer. I had a couple of conversations with people who work in social media over the last weekend, and they told me that those are the mistakes that a lot of people are making right now because they don't understand the difference between information and persuasion. Now, the persuasion speech is, again, designed to make a subjective argument and convince the audience that the point is valid. Your informative speech is a presentation that's basically um, something that's going to state just the facts. Everything is objection. Nothing is too much overended. Then there's, you know, your mental outline. Once you have a, mel uh, a mental outline in your head, it's going to enhance your ability to maintain mental contact with the copy. The only people that knows what you have written down are you. So you can't be so caught up on being 100% uh, in touch with the copy so that if you make a mistake, you push forward, okay? If you're the only person in the room that knows that you've made a mistake and a point that you're trying to get out, that's okay, as long as your audience doesn't know it. As long as it doesn't take away or you create the perception of confusion. And there are a lot of people that get confused and caught up 
when they are not comfortable or don't have the mental space to uh, retain information and therefore they're so reliant on paperwork, you know, uh, other tools of engagement that it takes away from them bonding. And remember, in a virtual conversation like we're having right now, I'm trying to bond with you. You need to be thinking about how you can bond with your audience with the barrier of technology in your face. And again, I'm open for some questions. Um, and please feel free to email me at your convenience. We can address them with any confusion that you may have. A couple of other things I wanted to uh, talk to you about was the influence of analytics. Analytics, uh, uh, analytics these days are statistical, uh, numeric um, assessments of what the trends and the direction that information is going. Uh, analytics is often big with in, in terms of TV and radio ratings. You know, we know that there's certain people who push the envelope and buzzwords and people are interested in seeing what they have. We talked about uh, the former president, 45, who is always in the news because he moves the needles. The empirical data suggests that most of the conservative websites and most of the conservative television pundits find him as a means to generate audience. When you can generate audience, you can generate money. You know, that's why there's a big difference between somebody in social media who has a 10,000, uh, you know, user uh, fan base as opposed to the guy that has... One million. Okay. I don't know about you, but there's a big, big difference. Now you can make some money if you've got 10,000 people or 20,000 people in your, uh, amongst your friends list, people who are looking at your content regularly. However, you want to be thinking about trying to get up near a million. If you land at 500,000, you know, you can make some money. And the last statistics that I saw, analytics, if you will, say that once you get up around 100,000 followers, each of your posts then has a financial dollar sign amount to it. And I know that, you know, gentlemen, those of you who follow college football, you know that, you know, there's this name, image and likeness thing. And people are growing their name, image, and likeness through YouTube portals and social media in order to get college scholarships so that uh, teams can see how good they play. But they're also looking at the analytic numbers to see if on my way towards securing the bag for a paid scholarship to college, that I'm also securing the bag for my financial well-being in the future. So again, these are concepts that we want you to be mindful of as you are moving forward, creating these informatively persuasive arguments and conversations that allow you to effectively use the social media and the technological platforms that are at your disposal, okay? And most importantly, there's a verbal execution thing that I think is so important. That's why it's so important for you to relax, collect yourself, have your information carefully thought out in an outline form, and then deliver. Okay. A lot of you are going to be so fast and so quick to rush through that you will find yourself stumbling and having to restart and get frustrated. 
as after 30 years in the media business where I've been out at games covering late at night and I'm tired and I got to write a story and I got to, um, you know, do a video piece to accompany it. It can become frustrating and you're tired and you're, you're worn out. Okay. But you got to make sure that your mind and your mouth are in sync to allow the, uh, your speech to flow with proper word use. The worst thing you can do is think that you can come off with a bunch of, uh, you know, trisyllabic words, you know, three syllables to make yourself sound so intelligent. That's not happening in this virtual world that we live in right now. The days of the, you know, wonderfully eloquent, um, you know, professor professorial types if you will who uh talk at their audience instead of to their audience are no more our presentations i'm not going to say they're casual but they're a lot less stoic than they have been in the past and you got to be mindful of that in your delivery okay and i'm trying to be conscious of that you know as i sort of I'm aging away from a lot of my students. So I'm always looking for that happy medium. And that's why I need you to be a lot more into uh, interactive with me about how to re reach your generation. Yours is the future. Your future is not now. Okay. Uh, I'm in my second act of my career uh, looking to move towards retirement. You are at the beginning stages of college. So what you have to learn and be mindful of is sinking your mind and your voice into one space when you're delivering your content. Please be mindful of that, okay? When you're delivering your content, you wanna be as sure as possible no stumbles no crutches no elongated pauses while you collect yourself now again if you choose to if you've got an opportunity where it's not a live situation go back edit that is fine chances are these days you may not have an opportunity to in fact edit so we want to make sure that your verbal execution where your mind and your mouth are in sync at all times. Breathe. That is so key. There's nothing worse than seeing somebody who's trying to talk so fast that they can't even get it out that they don't even take a breath. No. A smooth, flowing, polished delivery. Now, I know it sounds like it's difficult to do all of this in... 90 seconds to three minutes. That's why you don't wait to the last minute to do it. You have a concept. You organize the concept in your head. You jot down some bullet points, your outline. You follow the bullet points all the way through with your paperwork outside of your shot. And then if you have to refer to it, you can look down, collect yourself and look back up. Newsflash. That's what news people have been doing for years and most of the people that you see these days are reading directly off the teleprompter and oftentimes they have written their script themselves okay so just be mindful of these 12 tips that i think can really help you and I want to make sure that you understand, and I'm going to provide you on Canvas with some notes about producing outlines. And I want you to see it, but I don't want you to follow it verbatim. There are three simple points that you want to be mindful of with your outlines. First off, the attention grabber, okay? Okay. And you've got elements to grab any attention with somebody. You can either use a visual aid, you know, in this world, a graphic. Uh, 
you know, something that's in your hand that helps to uh, break the ice. These are really ice breaking moments. Um, use a use a moment from your uh, past experiences that relate to the subject matter that you're talking to or talking about. That always helps to break the ice. Um, there may be a quote that stands out from a book or a poem that you read that seems to help uh, shape and mold the tenor of your organism or, or of your um, uh, presentation those are things that help or you really want to engage the audience ask them a question and again these are broad based conversations or 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 um, ways to grab the attention but you also have to make the decision of what kind of presentation am i doing what works in a presentation where you're trying to advance your brand as opposed to a conversation where you're trying to get a job is different. And by the end of this semester, you'll know the difference and you will know how to execute those as well. The second most important thing you got to be mindful of, in my opinion, is having a credibility statement. That's going to validate what you know to who you're speaking to. For purposes of any informative, persuasive opportunity, you want to be the one that comes off as the expert, okay? People are going to be looking at you to know what you're talking about. People are going to think that if they're interviewing you, that if you are presenting to them, that you're an expert in some chosen field. Wear that, okay? Be mindful of that, all right? Don't be scared to be smart about something. It's okay. Now, you don't have to be so smart as you're intimidating, but you certainly don't want to be um, so dispassionate that it creates the perception that you really don't know what you're talking about. Very, very fine line between the two. But the masters of content creation and developing a social media presence and a platform have mastered it and mastered it well. And then finally, in conclusion, um, you really just want to su summarize what you said and most of all, why it's important. Case in point, I think, and I'm using this as an example, so I don't mean to offend. I think that Closing the borders right now would help relieve the tension on America's security. And therefore, I think we should construct a wall and make sure that we also make things easier for immigrants to become citizens. Throughout the course of that presentation, I'm going to talk about teaching English. I'm going to talk about uh, gaining legal job employment, uh, pathways to citizenship for uh, parents whose children were born here and things of that nature. But the best way for you to be informed is to do your diligence and research. Research is a good thing because the more you know, even if it doesn't come across in your presentation, because you can't use everything all the time, certainly in a minute and to 90, uh, you know, 60 seconds to three minutes. Between one and three minutes, it's just impossible. But you definitely want to be able to know how to skim the surface, number one. And number two, organize it so that your main points are at the top, You've got your transition in the middle to where you're trying to convince people that you're right. And at the end, you tie the entire presentation up with a bow. And once you've tied that up, you should have left them with some type of hook that helps you come through. Okay? Now, again, all this will be attached. I want you to look at it, download it, hold it. Think about questions and then begin 
your process of analyzing what you see in social media, who's doing it well, who's not doing it well, what you can gain out of the best. Because remember, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. So if you, let's just say, borrow some of the skills that you see somebody else have, it just may help you advance your brand. Well, that's going to do it. Um, again, if you have any questions, my email is open, mgray125 at umd.edu. That's mgray125 at umd.edu. And I will try to do my best to get back in touch with you within the next 24 hours. Or you can also try to reach out to me at M as in Mark, F as in Fitzgerald, G as in Gray, media guy at gmail.com. Okay? You guys have a safe and pleasant weekend. And I hope to see you next week in class, live, local, late breaking, and in living color. Y'all have a great weekend. Relax. Try to enjoy some of the weather if it's good out there. But I'm anxious to start seeing you really embrace these concepts so that we can start producing informative and persuasive presentations that will help you garner the internship, garner the job, and secure the bag so that you will all be successful. Have a great weekend, and as always, be safe.